Good evening, everyone. Grace and peace be with you tonight. Uh, this is Elder Albert Ray Dancy coming to you from 39 West Avenue Macedonia Church. And uh, we're going to uh, partake in our Wednesday night Bible study once again. Uh, we're riding a spiritual tsunami um, that took place in here on Sunday as we ordained the new uh, pastor of Macedonia Church, Pastor Brandon Davis. And we are so grateful tonight for the first time, I can say, giving honor to Pastor Davis. <laughs> Amen. And also giving honor to our overseer, uh, Pastor uh, DeWitt Stevens Jr. Uh, and Elder Michael J. Rumble. We're blessed to be here tonight. God has blessed us to see one more day. I'm excited about this lesson. There are so many nuggets in it, and hopefully we'll be able to uncover them all. Uh, let's begin with prayer. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ricky uh, Lewis if he would open us up with the word of prayer. Thank you, Elder Dancy. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you tonight just to tell you thank you. Thank you for another day that you've kept us, oh God. Lord, we thank you because you kept our mind stayed on you. And Father, just for that alone, we say thank you. Father, we pray that you open up our hearts and our minds tonight as we participate and embark on your holy word, oh God. Father, touch Elder Dancy as he teaches this lesson. Anoint him afresh. Touch his mind. Don't just give him clarity, but give us clarity as we go into your word. And help us this day not just to be hearers, but doers of your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Ricky. I hope you're excited about the word uh, because God has really been speaking to us through these lessons about obedience. And tonight is no exception. Uh, tonight's uh, title is Obedience in Rest. Obedience in Rest. Uh, the lesson text is taken out of Exodus, the 31st chapter, verses 12 through 18. It is part of our second unit, which is entitled Obedience in Society. I would like uh, Sister Angela McFarlane uh, at this time to read uh, our lesson text for us out of Exodus 31, 12 through 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever do any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Angela. So as we move along, uh, today's aim, the facts from this lesson we want to glean is to understand the regulations of the Sabbath commandment for Israel. The underlying principle is to recognize the meaning and purpose behind the Sabbath commandment. And the application that we should be able to make is to strengthen our, our commitment to Sunday as a day to worship God and honor him in special ways. I want to say at the outset uh, of this lesson that to really understand all of the pieces of this lesson, 
You need to look at it in the context of God and his covenant with the nation of Israel. It's about covenant. If you really think about these lessons, the motivation for obedience among the, the nation of Israel was love. They would obey God because they loved God, because they appreciated all that God had done for them in terms of delivering them from the uh, iron furnace of Egypt um, with 10 mighty plagues and bringing them uh, into the land of promise, the land that had been promised unto Abraham. God honored his covenant with Abraham and he continued to carry it on with the nation. God is a nation builder and we see, we see that in terms of the way he dealt with Israel. Amen. So keep, keep that in mind. Everything is contextualized in terms of the covenant that God had with his people. So as I, as I was praying and meditating over this lesson, um, the Lord uh, kept bringing back to my remembrance uh, our uh, dedication uh, of, of this, this house. When we, uh, in 2015, when we, we came into this house and we took occupancy for the first time, the very first message from the Lord that our pastor spoke at this sacred desk was remember the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath. And he preached that on October the 25th of 2015. And it always, I was always curious as to why God, why God would speak uh, to us about the Sabbath as the first message um, proclaimed in this house. And it's interesting that in October, we celebrated seven years, seven years of being here at 39 West Avenue. That is sig significant. Seven is the number of God's perfection and completion. Um, I believe we have entered into our rest, amen. And as we go forward in this lesson, Hopefully that will become more clear. So, excuse me here. Okay. Some of us are old enough to remember when, when, when Sunday in Connecticut um, was a day that was, that work was prohibited. At one time we had, you know, a, a, what are called blue laws, blue laws that were in effect in Connecticut. And I remember as a boy growing up uh, and on Sunday, uh, liquor couldn't be sold. On Sunday, certain uh, businesses were, were shuttered. They were closed down. And Sunday was a day where you worship God, where you uh, focus on God. But we have, we have strayed far away from that. But um, there are some states that still celebrate uh, uh, Sunday as a holy day. Um, Sister Mary, could you read uh, what the uh, caption for this uh, slide, please? The Supreme Court has held that Sunday blue laws are permissible, and many states still have them. Though they are not as restrictive as in early America, most today have to do with the pro prohibition of alcohol sales on Sunday, such as demonstrated in this photo, where the wine section is roped off at a Trader Joe's store in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, to comply with that state's law. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Lord, take us back. Take us back. Introducing the lesson. Some of us remember that there was a time in America when the Lord's day was considered a holy day. Today, however, the situation has changed dramatically. For most people and businesses, Sunday is just another day. Restrictions are few and otherwise dedicated Christians 
have to choose between church and soccer or some other extracurricular or recreational activity. Followers of Christ have long recognized the difference between works of necessity and choosing to participate in recreation or business that could be pursued on other days. Keeping fire departments, nursing homes, and hospitals open on Sunday is considered necessary. And many would fault those required to work in these and similar jobs. Although Christians do not keep the Sabbath as ancient Israel did, the Sabbath principle remains. Reviving this principle is an obvious challenge. Amen. Amen. So uh, in this reading, it says that Christians do not practice the Sabbath as Jews do. And that is very true. And we're going to see why in a few minutes. But I want to point out here that it's important for us to be aware of false doctrines that are being promoted today. Um, it's, it's referred to as replacement theology. And that replacement theology says that um, the black man is the modern day Jewish nation. We are the modern day Hebrews. And what, what the Israelites did in this day, the black man should be doing. That is a false teaching and a false doctrine. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see why in, in just a few. Okay, let's watch this real quick. How is the Sabbath celebrated today? So maybe you're Jewish and wondering how to get started doing this Shabbat thing. Or maybe you're not Jewish and you want to better appreciate what your friend is up to or why your coworker leaves early on Fridays. Let's look at two things, why people do Shabbat and how. Okay, so why? It's the single most important building block of living a Jewish life, according to pretty much everyone. The Torah explains in chapter one that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day ceased from creating. So to mark that and appreciate creation, Jews cease creating things as well. We live life in the realm of space, going places, making things, buying and fixing stuff. We have to focus on the physical world on a day-to-day -day basis, and sure, we can do it mindfully, but Shabbat is a maneuver into the world of time. Letting go of making and buying and fixing is entering what Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel famously called a palace in time. It's hard to set aside the phone, the email, the cleaning, the errands, but that's the whole point, to set aside the time for something holy. It not only connects you to God, but also to yourself and the whole of the Jewish people. It creates a rhythm to life with the seventh note of rest time. Now, to the how. People talk about Shabbat being a day of not working or a day of rest. Jewish tradition actually defines 39 categories of creating-ish work, planting, building, hoisting stuff around, that you're supposed to refrain from on Shabbat. And traditionally observant Jews extrapolate from that to mean no emails, no errands, no driving, cooking, or using technology. It's more than what's not done. Making Shabbat, or as you might hear it said, keeping Shabbos, means making sacred time. People bring in Shabbat by lighting candles at sundown and go from a dinner with challah and wine and singing to a morning maybe spent at services hearing about the Torah portion to a big lunch with friends or a picnic in the park. There are naps, strolls around the neighborhood, books, text study, games, lots of low-key pastimes. It ends at nightfall on Saturday with a candle putting out ritual called Havdalah. There are tons of ways to celebrate Shabbat. And if you want to know more specifics about challah, candles, or songs, or how to say some of the blessings, we have plenty of resources for you. Heschel said that things do not lend significance to a moment. It is the moment that lends significance to things. Taking a day to live this way can bring a sense of wholeness, or in Hebrew, shalom. So let's end with a wish for Shabbat Shalom. Maybe you're 
Jewish and wondering how to get started doing this Shabbat thing. Or maybe you're not Jewish and you want to better appreciate what your friend is up to. Or Okay. Um, Brother Brian, Brian Davis, help us uh, continue on with introducing this lesson by reading this, please. Most of us live in a culture that is poles apart from what we see in the Old Testament regarding Sabbath observance. Whereas the Israelites often tended to take God's already stringent Sabbath commands to logistic extremes, today's society has abandoned any concern whatsoever for a day set aside to honor God. Decades ago, the Lord's Day was part of the regular routine, even if it was largely an outward observance. Today, Sunday is treated like any other day of the week. Anything goes. This gives Christians an opportunity to stand out from the crowd by making the Lord's Day one that we genuinely honor in our hearts and in our actions. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we're going we're gonna to approach this uh, lesson uh, with the following outline. Sabbath regulation uh, as laid forth in Exodus 31, 12 and 13. Sabbath rejection, Exodus 31, 14 through 16. And Sabbath rationale, Exodus 31, verses 17 through 18. Okay, for some reason I'm having problems with my clicker, but we'll get there. Okay, so I want to play one other short video to give us some context again for the Sabbath and the significance of it for the nation of Israel and for the church, and in particular for our church. Listen very carefully. Uh, to the explanation in this narrative. The number seven is a big deal in the Bible. Yeah, in biblical Hebrew, the word seven is connected to the idea of fullness or completeness. And that's something we all long for, but don't often experience. Instead, we find ourselves working endlessly, fighting back chaos with no real rest. Yes. Now keep all that in mind as we turn to Genesis 1 in the Bible. It begins with darkness and disorder, but then God speaks to bring about light and order so that life can flourish. And this happens over the course of six days. Each day is marked with the phrase, there was evening and there was morning. But on the seventh day, something special happens. God stops and rests. Right. Creation is brought to its completion on the seventh day. And that phrase, there was evening and there was morning, it doesn't appear on day seven. It's like a day with no end. On the seventh day, God's presence fills his creation. The land provides for all of God's creatures, including humans who are appointed to rule the world with God forever. Kings and queens of the seventh day rest. I can get into that. But the humans are deceived by a dark power and they forfeit that rest. They're exiled into the wilderness where they have to work as slaves to the land until they die and return to the dust from which they came. But God wants to restore humanity back to that seventh day rest. So he chooses to give the family of Israel that experience of ultimate rest so they can share it with others. But how? They're in Egypt, slaves to an oppressive empire who's grinding them into the dust. So God confronts Egypt and he liberates the Israelites, taking them through the darkness and chaos on the way to the promised land. Now, while they're on their way, they find themselves in the wilderness. It's easy to get lost. Life is a struggle. They're not in the land of rest yet. But while they're on the way, God invites them in the wilderness to start living as if they're in the promised land. But how do you practice the future rest in the wilderness? Well, God tells them that every seventh day they are to stop their work, or in Hebrew, to Shabbat, so that they can rest and enjoy God's good world. So take a whole day to live as if the ultimate rest has already come. Yeah, this is the Sabbath, celebrated every week on the seventh day. But there's more. The Sabbath is just one of seven festivals that Israel practiced every year, each one anticipating that seventh day rest. That is a lot of sevens. And there's even more. 
Every seven years, the Israelites were to liberate slaves, forgive debts, and let the land rest for a whole year. And then, every seven times seven years was the ultimate seventh day rest, called the Year of Jubilee. If anyone had lost their land or gone into debt, all was forgiven, everything restored. Wow, so the Sabbath, these feasts, the Year of Jubilee, it's all pointing towards the hope of future rest. Right. Now, when the Israelites went into the land, they forgot their God, and so they forfeited their chance for rest in the Promised Land. They're exiled and enslaved again by an oppressive nation, led back into a world of chaos and disorder. But Israel's prophets said that their exile would end one day, and that the ultimate jubilee of freedom and rest would come, but generations go by, and they're still waiting. It's at this dark point in the story that Jesus appears, and he launches his public mission on a Sabbath day. Yeah, he read aloud from the scroll of Isaiah saying that it was time for all captives and slaves to be released because this was the year of the Lord's favor. What did he mean, this is the year of the Lord's favor? He was talking about the ultimate jubilee. Also, oh, Jesus is claiming that seventh day rest would come through him. Right, he said that he was the Lord of the Sabbath and he confronted disorder and darkness in all of its forms, liberating people from sickness, sin, even from death itself. Yet, Jesus was killed, so even his work was undone. Well, it seemed that way. But notice, Jesus timed his death to take place at the end of the week. His body rested in a tomb during the Sabbath and on the eighth day, he rose from the dead. Oh wait, the eighth day? You mean the first day of a new week? Exactly. Jesus' resurrection was like the first day of a new creation, where God's light and life broke into the darkness. So because of the resurrection, we have hope in God's promise of future rest. But we're not there yet. It's like we're still in the wilderness, where we experience struggle and pain. But as we journey towards that ultimate seventh day, Jesus invites us to experience a taste of real rest now by following him. Or in his words, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I got so excited when I watched that video because I'm thinking in my head, okay, this is our seventh year. We, we've, been, we've been here seven years now. We came in in 2015. God is speaking to us about the rest. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. We just heard the prophet of the house speak to us about Hezekiah getting 15 more years. He said 15 means uh, in, in, in numerical, biblical numerology, it means rest. Wow. God is, God is amazing. I, he just continues to blow my mind. Anybody have any thoughts on uh, anything that we have uh, viewed thus far? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Okay, if not, I'll keep moving. Hello, uh, Brother Daryl. Uh, yes, I think about um, Pastor Brandon Davis being coming a pastor now, and Pastor Stevens getting rest now. Amen, 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 brother. So our first section is Sabbath regulation. Sabbath re regulation. Um, Sister Annalisa, please read uh, this text for us. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Does sanctify you. Does sanctify you. The Lord that doth sanctify you. That word, sanctify. The observance of the Sabbath was one of the ways Israel was to be sanctified or set apart from other nations. As they were set apart from other nations, they were to be a witness to the other nations and reveal their God to these other nations. In this, in this rest that we're entering into, in this Sabbath that we're entering into, 
God is going to showcase us to the world. He's going to allow his glory to be seen through us. It's not our glory. It's his glory. We're just vessels that God is going to reveal himself through. Amen, amen. I felt that glory in here on Sunday. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thoughts, anybody? Thoughts about sanctification. I heard on, um, I heard on Sunday that it's still going to be holiness under the new pastor as it was under the, the, the previous pastor. It's still going to be holiness. We're still set apart as holiness unto the Lord. Sister Mary. And also when I think about sanctification, it's setting apart. And we should always just make time for God, dedicate special time just for him to just extend this concept of the Sabbath, because that's also what the Lord was teaching. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you um, from our lesson. I believe uh, this was in your, your lesson. Maybe not. Maybe it was just in the expositor, but it was very good. When the Jews observed the Sabbath, it was not only a mark of their devotion to the Lord, but it was also a witness to their pagan neighbors to whom the seventh day was just another day. By resting on the seventh day, the Jews were promoting their own welfare as well as that of their servants and farm animals acknowledging the lordship of Jehovah over time and creation. Amen. Amen. In, in, in this chapter, the lesson starts at uh, verse 12. But uh, if you read verses 1 through 11, you'll see that God is commissioning uh, the workmen who were going to fashion the tabernacle after the pattern that Moses had been given in the mount. And uh, to put it in context, God did not want the people to get carried away with doing the work of building the tabernacle. Yes, it was God's will for the tabernacle to be built, but not at the expense of observing the Sabbath, not at the expense of, of observing the Sabbath. What is God saying? God is saying, whereas in the past we may have uh, neglected to honor the Lord's day as we ought to, in this season, we must put that aside. In this season, we must remember the Sabbath. And for us, the Sabbath is the Lord's day Sunday. We must assemble ourselves. We must not fail to assemble ourselves together as, as, as it is with some because God Almighty is going to manifest himself in the midst of us as we come in faith, as we come in obedience. Again, that's what we're talking about here in these lessons, obedience. If God says assemble, what do obedient servants do? They assemble. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, Sister Annalisa. I had read um, the golden text illuminated the last paragraph. Um, it goes along with what you're saying. It said the sign of the God's, the sign of God's Sabbath has a connection of sanctification. And in this, it is somewhat like the sign of circumcision. And then it says the word sanctify is the common term for making something holy, separating it for God's use. The point of God's covenantal dealings is to create a people for himself who learn and display his holy ways. They belong to him and are to be devoted to his purposes. Hello, hello. There it is. Amen. Thank you, Sister Annalisa. That was, that was perfectly timed. Uh, Sister um, Bernadette. Um, you reading those few verses, Elder Dancy, when I was reading the lesson, that also really um, opened my eyes because even though the work on the tabernacle was an important work and they were anointed to do the tabernacle, 
on the seventh day, God wanted the work to be set aside. So in a sense that he can have quality time with his people. And th there's sometimes we get so busy, even though we're doing a work for the Lord, but it's still, we have to put, I, I was thinking about even Mary and Martha that were so busy, but God requires his quality time alone with him is intimate time. So we can't replace our time intimately with the Lord with doing a work for the Lord. If Amen. Amen. Uh, not only should we not be um, absent for, from church because we're working, but we have to reexamine our uh, thinking about allowing our children, our children to participate and all these extracurricular activities. I know, you know, it's, it's a difficult pill for many of us to, to swallow, but we're in a new place. We're not in the same place that we were uh, a year ago or even a month ago. The cloud has shifted and, and we, we've, got to, we've got to recognize, we've got to recognize that the cloud has shifted. We gotta have a different mindset. Uh, Sister Merle. Add to what you are saying and what Sister Bernadette is saying. It's like almost like now we have to get in our minds that busyness is not our friend. No. <laughs> and because busyness clouds us and we get so busy that we fail to spend time with the Lord which is also a part of that Sabbath rest. So we get so busy and we figure, oh, I didn't do my time with the Lord today. I'll get to it tomorrow. But in this place, as you're saying, God no longer wants us to do that. He wants that commitment to him all the time. Amen. Uh, Sister Angela. Brother yes. Ricky. So, uh, Elder Dan, there's this ministry that I follow, and um, they were in the midst of building a church. And he's a prophet. His wife is the pastor. And they told the employees to take off Sunday. And the employees were like, well, you need to be in this church. You're going to open up on this day and that day. These people, that family was like, you know, it's the Lord's day. Take the day off. We believe him to do this. He told us what day we're going to open. And it opened that day. And the employees took off Sunday. God took care of everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God got the glory. Amen. God got the glory. Praise God. We've got to put God first in this in this hour. He wants us to be obedient. That's that's what it is. That's the context of, 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 of what this lesson is saying. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. He said he said, fail not to assemble yourself brother ricky yes i just want to um just add i was listening to uh sister merle when she said busyness is not our friends i remember a couple years back just real quick off the heels of that um you know i just had a lot of stuff just going on and you know i was like man i don't really have time to pray you know with work and you know the family and just the kids and stuff like that and it was like the lord just spoke to me just really clearly you know pretty much just saying listen so did i make a mistake with the 24 hours that I gave you. And I was just like, well, wow. Like, you know, cause I, you know, I was getting up at like eight o'clock and you know, my schedule was really full, but you know, when we say we're too busy, especially to pray or, or to give God time, what we're saying at that moment is God, you made a mistake when you, you know, created time, you know, for us, for men. And we know God didn't make any mistake, you know, because if he gave us 30 hours in a day, we'll find a way to, you know, to fill up that 30 hours. If he gave us 40, we'll find that way to fill up 40 hours. So, you know, that time that we have, so what I had to start doing instead of waking up at, you know, eight o'clock or seven 30 in the morning, I said, okay, well, God, you gave me this time. So, you know, it may not, I may not like it, but now I just have to get up, you know, you know, early in the morning, you know, five, I think at that time I was getting up at four 30 or whatever, just to get up to pray because God really convicted me and said, listen, you know, I didn't make a mistake when I made time. You know, we just have to learn how to balance our time up. Very good. Very good. Sister Nikki. The Sabbath is God's ordained pattern for living. And the keeping of the Sabbath, it was a sign 
that God truly ruled Israel. And it still is a sign today. And uh, something else that I had read in Nelson's Bible Dictionary is society was not to seek advancement outside of submission to God. So this is a time where we really need to come and, and make that, that solemn obedience in resting on the Sabbath and forgetting about our toil and, and forgetting about our cares and just totally trusting in God's provision and, and not to seek advancement outside of our submission to him. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. These comments are great. So Sister Annalisa. I just kind of wanted to share like a really brief testimony about Pastor Brandon, my son, when he was 15, Brandon was always, um, he's very gifted athlete at baseball, um, football and basketball. And one thing was when bas when baseball season came, we you don't have too many games on Sundays. That's usually football, more games on Sundays. But what happened was when he was 15, they went into the regionals and districts. So the city of Norwalk, the Babe Ruth team was really going far. Brandon came and told me and his dad that he wanted to be more dedicated to God and not miss church because with those tournaments, he would have to travel. And Brandon gave that up. And that season, they ended up winning the World Series for Babe Ruth for the city of Norwalk. But then when I look at what Brandon gave up to what he has today, now me and dad made, you know, we made exceptions once in a while that he can play on a Sunday and Bryson and, but long story short, I look at what Brandon gave up, gave up to what he has today. And that was his decision not to go on and play on Sundays anymore. So I just give God the glory for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Beautiful. Sister Mary. And I just wanted to give like a supporting scripture that was coming to me um, as we're going through the lesson. It's in Isaiah 58 and 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. Can I read it? It says that if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the yeah. earth. And that's what God is. He wants us to just prosper. And that's why he wants us to be obedient to the Sabbath. Excellent. What's, what's that uh, scripture again? Isaiah 58, 13 to 14. Write that down, saints. Write that down. Praise God. Um, that's one of the scriptures that you know we uh, we we cherished over the years. Uh, it was a fasting fasting chapter in Isaiah. Praise God. Amen. Okay. So, what is the primary meaning of the word Sabbath? What is the primary meaning of the word Sabbath? Sister Shirley Stenrod. I'm um, sorry. Um, the word Sabbath comes from the meaning it means to stop or to cease. The concept of refraining from ordinary work. Just to stop and to cease. Good, good, good. Uh, Joe, did you want to add something to that? Uh, she pretty much said it, but I also wanted to add about um, when you guys were talking about the Sabbath and raising you know, your, your kids to not play sports on uh, Sunday. My grandmother did the pretty much the same thing with me. She wouldn't allow me to play any sports on Sunday. That was one day that my coach understood that I had to go to church and that was put first. And by her doing that, when I got older, it set a precedent that even now when I get ready to go do things, if I haven't given God his time first, I feel uncomfortable and I, I just don't feel right doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Sister Shelley. Yes, I wanted to um talking about businesses that um that close on Sunday, you know, giving God, you know, that day. I was thinking about um that Chick-fil-A um restaurant that they have on Connecticut Avenue. Yep. I'm saying that um all the other ones they open on Sunday. But if you notice that one they close on Sundays, but for the rest of the week they are the busy, busiest place. On Connecticut Avenue, no time can you ever go there, walk in and walk out. And that's just the blessing of God. That's that's amazing that you bring that up because every time I go by 
Chick-fil-A on Friday evening or Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon, the lines are incredibly long. You know, so you're right. They don't miss, they don't miss a beat. God, God makes up for everything that they may have missed on, on that on that Sunday. Praise God. They have a loyal, a loyal client base. A sister um, Emma and uh, Brother Ricky. Um, I was just reading about that too with the Chick-fil-A. They they saw, I forgot who the founder was, but basically he made the decision back in 1946 to close the restaurants on Sunday so that he and his family and the employees set aside that day of rest and worship um if they choose to for the employees. So that I, I found that amazing and powerful as you were saying how they're so busy and they had not missed a beat even closing on Sunday. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Ricky. I was, I was sitting here laughing. I was out literally I was reading. Uh, when I was doing the lesson, I was thinking about Chick-fil-A. They're ranked out of all the fast food uh, restaurants, number three, as the highest, like, wow. um, grossed in, um, in you know, the country. Chick-fil-A is number three. I think they're behind McDonald's and Starbucks. They're number three. But, and I was like, man, that's, that's crazy because they don't even got a dollar menu. So it's not even like they're, they're a cheap restaurant. And the fact that, uh, how God has flourished them and, and, and just really made them, you know, to the top, you would think that you know they would have cheap, but it's not. It's just almost just God's favor on them, just for them honoring the Sabbath. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for for those comments. Okay, so what what is the primary meaning of the word? Okay, this is a continuation. Um, it's a little more information. I think uh, did I read this one? Yeah, I read this one already. Yeah, so let me go ahead. Oops. So how was the Sabbath a sign between Israel and God? I think uh, Nikki uh, alluded to this a little bit. How, how was it a sign uh, between Israel and God? How was it a sign? Uh, Nikki, could you come back on and, and just read this for us, please? Sure. Like the rainbow and circumcision, God said, the Sabbath is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. Although there are similarities between Israel's law and other ancient moral codes, the Sabbath law was unique to Israel. Yeah, so this is really important again in terms of contextualizing all of, all of, all of this because God had a unique relationship with the nation of Israel. He still does today even though they have not come into the fullness of revelation as to who Jesus is, the, uh, the, the scripture said, the prophet said that Israel is the apple of God's eye. And as a result of the covenant that he has with this nation, there was certain, there was certain obedience that they were required to observe. And the Sabbath was, was a critical uh, uh, act of love. And uh, you know, Jewish people today, you know, uh, they, they, the, the majority of Jewish people, whether they're Orthodox or liberal or whatever, they observe the Sabbath. They observe the Sabbath. And I'm talking about the weekly Sabbath, um, which begins on Friday evening and ends on Saturday evening of every week. OK. Yeah. Let me also say here that um, I don't know if if you all have been paying attention, but there, there, there's a rise in anti-Semitism, um, hate mongering uh, towards uh, the Jews and just all kinds of um, controversy. Kyrie Irving has been involved in controversy. We know that uh, Kanye, who is now known as Ye, uh, has been involved in some controversy too. And, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because what I mentioned earlier about this false teaching out there that promotes the idea that the black man is the uh, present day Hebrew. Um, a lot of these people have bought into this and, um, you know, um, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous um, because you'll begin to embrace ideas that not only a false doctrine, but also um, 
you know, are influenced by the devil, okay? Um, God's chosen people are the Israelites, and we need to keep our hand and our mouth off them. Amen. Amen. And I don't care who you are. You know, that goes for Kanye, that goes for Kyrie Irving, that goes for me, that goes for you. Amen. Uh, Sister Bernadette. Elder Dance, it's amazing you said that because I was telling my mother this morning, last night, I had a dream. And in the dream, the Lord was saying to me, pray for Jerusalem. And so I shared that with her this morning. So it's amazing you're saying that, but God really wants us to pray for Jerusalem, pray for the, the peace of Jerusalem, because his eye, God's eyes are on, upon that land. Those are his people. Amen. Amen. I'm to Abraham. So I don't know what's coming around the bend. Yeah. But God really wants us to up our prayers um, for uh, Jerusalem, for the people of Israel. I believe that, Sister Bernadette. Okay. Okay, the second um, division uh, of the lesson is Sabbath rejection. Sabbath rejection. Uh, and we're, um, we're in Exodus 31, 14, and through 16. So, um, Sister Mary, please read that, that text. Um, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul should be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So uh, the rejection that's being referred to here is if, if the nation of Israel violated observance of the, the Sabbath, they would be re rejected by God to the extent that they would suffer death. The rejection would be rejection by God. Okay, um, does anybody think that is severe? Or what are your thoughts on that? What are your What are your thoughts on that, Sister Angela? Yes, when I read this elder dance, in my mind went back to how they never got a day of rest. They never got a break in Egypt. They were so under bondage, and now the Lord is saying, "Take this day to rest, to worship me, to remember me." what I've done for you, what I brought you out of. And I know that not all of them, it was so many. I just, I was like, I'm just sure that there was someone that was disobedient, but you would think that you were welcome that day. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the right context. You know, taking, taking uh, the mind back to the days of bondage when you, you couldn't rest, <laughs> you had, a, you were under the hand of a, uh, a, a cruel taskmaster that you know uh, demanded labor from you day and night, and that's what the devil did for us. He demanded of us uh, to, to 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 be a slave to sin. Okay, so now God has delivered us, as He delivered Israel. He's brought us into uh, the land of promise. The least we could do, because we love him for this great salvation that he's delivered unto us, the least we could do is present ourselves to him and show him that he is in fact special, that we are willing to worship him and, and commune with him and fellowship with him on the day that he has set aside, the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Sister Merle. And I think just to add to that, we have to also remember that where we are, we're still at Mount Sinai. And like you just said, God has just brought this nation out. So God was really still trying to establish them as a people. God is still teaching them in these, these scriptures that we're looking at what is expected of them. 
And so for God, this was a serious situation. And like Sister Angela said, they had not had rest. They, they, like you're saying, they have to labor. So now God, and I think you'll go into it, the whole notion of God having rest, but God was now trying to establish that with his people because he really felt that this time of rest and Sabbath being sanctified to him was so important that he was like, listen, if you don't keep it, you're going to die. Because it was so important to the Lord that they um, keep that Sabbath rest. And I'm sure you'll get more into it as you move on. But I just wanted to bring out that point. Yes, he was doing that, but he's establishing a nation. And he was serious about Sabbath rest. And we as a people have to really look at that now even the more. God is serious for us in some way that we too have that Sabbath rest. Most definitely, most definitely. And we will uh, unpack that a little bit more and deal with uh, some of what you just uh, mentioned. So breaking the Sabbath was considered so serious that the death penalty could be meted out for this sin as well. Now, let's look at some other uh, offenses that brought the death sentence. Um, Brother Brian, what do we have here? What other, what other uh, uh, offenses in the Mosaic law could you be put to death? According to the Mosaic law, a number of sins were considered so grave that they required the death penalty. These included murder, parental abuse, kidnapping, cursing parents, witchcraft, bestiality, adultery, blasphemy, idolatry, and harlotry. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Think about that. Okay, so, so what is the reason Christ had conflicts with the Pharisees over the Sabbath? We're going to kind of just shift a little bit here. What is, what is the reason that the Lord had conflicts with the Pharisees over the Sabbath? Sister Jolene? Oh, um, because Jesus healed the, um, he healed on the Sabbath. He healed the man that was sitting in, by the pool of Bethesda. He healed a um, blind man. His disciples ate the grain when they were in the field. And the Pharisees were strict to the law, but not to the good that he was doing. They just couldn't see beyond the fact that he was breaking the Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. Um, you may mention of going through the cornfields. Um, it, it's recorded in Mark, the second chapter, verses 23 through 28. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. Verse 27 says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So I kind of want to, I, I kind of want to, you know, uh, us to, to, to really, uh, you know, break this, this ver these two verses, these last two verses apart, because there's deeper meaning here. Well, Sister Linda. 
the problem with the Pharisees was that they were very legalistic. So they added more of their own little rules to the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was basically for the physical rest and spiritual refreshment, but they had added their own rules of what people were to do and not to do. They were more legalistic. Yeah, good. Very good. I'm, I'm going to read these two verses again because this is packed with revelation here. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, the clip that I, you know, I played for, for you in the beginning about uh, the creation, God uh, the Father, God, the Son, God, uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, were all in, involved in the creation in the beginning, in the book of Genesis. Right? Amen. Brother Brandon. Yeah, you can finish your thought, Elder Nancy. I, did you finish your thought? I don't want to cut you off. No, no, okay, okay. I'm good. I was going to say, to, to the verses you said that um, um, the Sabbath was made for the man and not the man for the Sabbath, um, the Sabbath was, was what that basically is saying is that the Sabbath was intended to help people. It wasn't supposed to be a burden. Um, and then I, I looked at Luke chapter six, um, six and, and it said um, that Jesus says to them when he heals the man with the, the withered hand on the Sabbath, he says to them um, in verse nine of chapter six, he said, I'll ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? to save life or to destroy it. So basically Jesus was showing them that, you know, you guys are using this in a way that really the Sabbath is good, but they were taking it to almost, for lack of a better word, they were taking it to an extreme. Mm -hmm. And like somebody said, they were legalistic and they were, you know, self-righteous, but they were taking it to a complete extreme that Jesus never intended, or God and Jesus obviously, never intended for the Sabbath to be. Amen. Amen. Very good. Uh, Elder Wilkes. I like what's being said because it's just um, it, um, it's just really important that everybody understand and know that Jesus did not break the Sabbath because we know there was no sin in Jesus and um, he couldn't he fulfilled the law but he did not break the law. He was the Lord of the Sabbath. In in the beginning, he's the one that on the seventh day, along with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, looked upon the creation and said it is good. And 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 uh, the scripture we're going to look at it in a minute says he was refreshed, he rested, <laughs> he create he created that seventh day specifically so that the man that he created could enjoy what he and the Trinity were enjoying. Praise God, Amen. God had us in mind in the beginning from the foundation of the world. The Sabbath was created for us, not the other way around. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Sister Mary. I like the way he said that the Lord, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. So the, um, the Sabbath, God is the focus of the Sabbath rest. He is the Sabbath rest. I know it says in Hebrews 4 that, you know, we have to cease from our own works to enter into his rest. So. He's the rest. He's the Sabbath rest. So when we're abiding in the Lord Jesus, we are entering into that Sabbath rest. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on Sunday. And, you know, if you look at it in a spiritual way, and you can just rest in him and just um, find that Sabbath rest in the Lord because he's Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. And, and we're going to go to that scripture in, in a few. The Hebrews 4, uh, 1 through 13. So you all can look that up because uh, we're going to go there. Uh, Sister Millie? Um, that word, I looked at that word refresh, the uh, elder Dancy. Uh -huh. and, in, and in Hebrews, the meaning for that word refresh means to breathe. So not that God, our creator, was tired after he completed um the world mm -hmm. that it says that he rested he wasn't tired mm -hmm. that hebrew word for refreshed is to breathe he amen 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 very good so um your sister annalisa 
let's, let's just read this here, um, this slide, please. Such interpretations are not unlike those encountered by Christ. When confronted by the Pharisees regarding his supposed breaches of the Sabbath, not content with the basic instructions given in the law, the Pharisees had added much legalistic minutia to the Sabbath commandment. Great. Okay. In what sense was the Sabbath to be holy to the Lord? In what sense? In what sense? What sense? Uh, let's get uh, some other hands that we haven't uh, we had yet. Let's get uh, some other hands. Uh, Sister Connie? I'm not sure if this is what you're looking for, but when we honor the Lord on the Sabbath, we are connecting with him, but we're also connecting with our community, our families and friends, our church fellowship. It's, you know, when I first was studying this lesson in my mind, I'm saying like, okay, what's this going to be about? But it's so deep. I, it's just overwhelming to me how not only that God wants us to love him with his whole heart and soul, but he wants us to love our neighbor as it's just so deep because even resting on the Sabbath helps our mental health, helps our families i mean I, I don't know it's just deep to me how god wants the families to be together going to church having dinner together spending that time and not running all over the place trying to make a dollar and accumulating more riches i don't know just thought about that today excellent excellent yeah and you you tapped into where we're going next week in the lesson you know um learning how to um love our neighbors practicing rather loving our neighbors uh, that's where we're going a uh, sister um uh, sonia um you asked the question about how um what was the the sense um as far as what the holy unto the lord and yeah. it was according to our lesson it states that it was meant to be different from other days especially as it related to physical refreshment and worship and so although they don't list it in the bible specifically what it would look like there had to be a difference from the other six days. Yep. And it was all driven toward worshiping God. Yep, very good. Elder Leroy and Brother Ricky. Yeah, um, my mind go back to the scripture in Psalm, uh, I believe it's 46, where it said, be still and know that I'm God. And there's something in, in humans, you know, sometimes we're just driven just to do and to do and to keep going. But God wants us to, you know, pause in the midst of all of that and to really reflect upon him and to know we have our blessings come from. He the one that gives us strength. And not only was he concerned about the humans, but also the animals, that they weren't overworked to death, you know, they needed to be, you know, to be arrested. And God was concerned and cared about them that he made provision that even the animals could be arrested. I heard this thing with this one nation that I read about years ago. And people would work so hard in so many hours that they would literally fall over and die on uh, their jobs at the desk. That they were so driven. But God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to reflect on him and focus on him. Yeah. I, I've heard countless stories of individuals that have worked 30, 40, you know, years, retired, and then within months or weeks, they die. You know, and, and that's really tragic. That's, that's very tragic. The reality is sometimes we work uh, to the detriment of our, our physical health and our, our body never gets a chance to rest. So when we put in a, a situation where now you got to rest because you have no job to go to, the body says, okay, I'm done. <laughs> it's, it's tragic, you know, uh, it's tragic. Uh, Brother Ricky and Sister Alma. Yeah, um, Elder, there's a, there's a lot that can be said about that when we speak about rest. I think um, Sister Sanya touched on it as well as Sister Connie when we were talking about with the lesson, um, uh, with, the, with the physical refreshment um, and pretty much how important it is. And it's almost like God uh, literally just wanted us to just stop. You know, he didn't rest like you went to sleep, you know, when he created the heavens and the earth, but he pretty much just stopped. And that's kind of like what God pretty much wants for us to do as sometimes, you know, and um, I think it was Exodus 31, the lesson was saying that um, 
oh man, my mind just went blank. But um, I forgot what I was gonna say. But yeah, I just kind of like wrote down some things on the importance of why it's important for us to stop and for important for us to rest our bodies. Um, even just the productivity of our lives, our daily lives, it, it helps with just mental, just our mental um, abilities on our day to days. And, you know, if you're in the gym, uh, just resting helps the muscles to repair themselves and prevent injury. Um, I also wrote rest is essential for physical health. When the body is deprived of sleep, it is unable to rebuild and recharge itself adequately, adequately. Um, Rest also helps for a healthier body. Um, rest also helps. It's less stress. And, it, and it's just like Sita Connie said, that that stuck with me with deeper relationships, uh, whether it's, you know, families or, or, or marriages. These are all things that God pretty much just saw the importance of, which is being rest. And, you know, that's why, you know, it was almost like it was like a sin. You know, it, it almost uh, brought on death, you know, because this is what he wanted for the body to go through. Amen. Amen. So Thelma? It was also meant to be different in that it wasn't a one and done deal. It was a perpetual covenant. So it will be ongoing forever. Amen. Uh, Brother Dell. Uh, Odessa, I just I was holding it in, but I had to say this. I just went to a funeral um, maybe a couple of days ago, whatever. But there's a difference in the people of God than the people that's in the world. As you know, we talked about Chick Fil A, but we look at our friends. Other DNC was like half all my friends was just they looked at dead. Other DNC. So when the Sabbath, as we keep it unto the Lord, we go, we get refreshed, we get restored, we get refilled. And you know, there was comment. Oh, I heard that I had a heart attack, but I'm looking at them like you, you look dead. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, I was going to have it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we, yeah. we look better than our classmates and people in the world. So we're connected to the source. Yeah. yeah and, and you know what, uh, Brother Daryl? I think as, as we continue to enter into the rest, the season of rest, that um, as God has spoken, he's going he's gonna to restore our youth even the more. You're right. You know, the majority of us don't look as beat up uh, or as worn and torn as our friends and members of our family even, because God has preserved us over the years, but he's getting ready to do even, even more, even greater in terms of uh, you know, the manifestation of, of soundness in our body, healings. A pastor spoke about it uh, as recently as last week, amen. He's not going to send them forth to the to the nations all broken and crippled. I think God's getting ready to do something miraculous. It's time for signs, wonders, and miracles. In the rest of the Lord, that's what we are going to inherit. Amen. Praise God. Uh, let me move on here. Okay, now the rationale. The rationales. Sabbath rationale. Verses uh, uh, 17 to 18. Uh, Sister, uh, Brother Brandon. I'm sorry, Brother brother uh, Brian. Yep. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, I want some comments on this verse. What, you know, we, we touched on it a little bit, but I think we can go deeper, deeper into it. What is, what is this seventh day he rested and was refreshed? It's already been said that he wasn't tired. God, God wasn't weary. Okay. So, this refreshing, this refreshing that comes, you know, uh, from the presence of the Lord. What is this refreshing? Can anybody give any uh, any clarity to that, Sister Mary? I'm thinking he was. Um, he looked at everything, all of his creation, and he was just in awe of himself. <laughs> I know God wants us to just. I'm God. To be still and know that he is God. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Ricky. Yeah, I think it was just a reflection. I think it was just God just stopping and just looking at everything that he created and uh, just to liken that unto us. You know, that's what he wants, you know, to pretty much just stop in the busyness that we do every day and just really just pay attention to God. You know, we should be doing it every day, but, you know, just for that Sabbath or that Sunday or, you know, the Lord's Day, we should really be reflecting. So when I think of God just saying that, that, you know, his refreshment, I just think him just reflecting on what he uh, what he did with uh, creation. Yeah. To take that a, a bit, bit further. OK, he was refreshed by the reflection that he saw of himself in his creation. In other words, when God looks at us and he sees himself in us, man, fully manifest, God is refreshed. Not only is he refreshed when he sees himself in us, he's refreshed when he sees himself in his creation. We are his creation. But I'm talking about the sun, the stars, the moon, all of that. When he sees himself reflected, he is refreshed. Amen. Did I see another hand, Sister Sonia? Well, what I was going to add was when you think about even how the rainbow is a sign of a remembrance for it has its purpose it's a reminder. And on the Sabbath, it's like when you to keep it holy and you kind of take that one day and just reflect on what God has done every week, it will remind us to be grateful for what he's done the past six days or even further than that. So it's a day of remembrance for us as well as we rest. And even when we rest our bodies and rest our minds and refresh and thank God, it can take us into a place really of praise and honor. And like, thank you, God, for what you brought me through this week, what you brought me through my life. It's a, it's a time of refreshing, but it's also a time of remembrance of where he's brought us from as well. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done, my soul cries hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. All we got to do is think. All we got to do is meditate and look and see how far God has brought us. Amen. That's, that's the, the refreshing. Okay. For some reason, I have deactivated my clicker. But it's okay. We got it. What did the Lord reiterate about the Sabbath? What did the Lord reiterate about the Sabbath? The Lord reiterated that his people's Sabbath observance was a sign, was a sign of a covenant between God and man. What do you think it means that God rested and was refreshed? We we've, we've dealt with this. Um, Sister Annalisa. You read what the, the book says. On the seventh day, God rested. However, we should not think of God being tired, as we might be after six days of labor. The word translated rested is the Hebrew word from which the word Sabbath comes. The idea is cessation of labor or activity, not repose. As the psalmist declared, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The word refresh comes from a Hebrew word meaning to breathe. This is anthropomorphic language and should not be construed to mean that the eternal God literally needed refreshment after his creative work was completed. Yeah, that word anthro, um, I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> uh, where is the definition? That's the definition of the word. An interpretation of what is not human or personal in terms of human or personal characteristics, such as the finger of God. Uh, Brother Brandon, Pastor Brandon. Yeah, I was going to um, say other Nancy too. Sometimes I think it's important when we re like read the well for myself. What I do when I read the word, I don't try to overthink it either. Because when you read the scripture, it just says that um, uh, on the seventh day he ended his work and he rested. It didn't say he needed rest. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we kind of, yep. just in our own self, we read scripture to people and they say, well, the Bible contradicts itself. It doesn't. It never said he needed it. It just said that he rested. He rested. Amen. Amen. So I want us now to go to uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. 
uh, verses 1 through 13. Hopefully uh, you located that scripture because I think that, you know, what I alluded to in the beginning, this being our seventh year here at 39 West Avenue with all the transition that has happened with you know, uh, Pastor Brandon being installed uh, and our pastors being sent out. This is the season when we enter into our rest. So what does that mean according to Hebrews 4, uh, 1 through 13? Sister Angela, uh, read that for us as we read along with you. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, nor being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do not enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There he remained, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into this rest, he also had ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Amen. Verse 10 again, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. And, and therein lies the vision of this house. Uh, total deliverance is an obtainable crown. I believe that the rest that God is bringing us into includes total deliverance. That which we have struggled with all of our lives, that which we have been able, been unable to overcome. In this season, I believe through the power of God, we will live in total deliverance. Praise God. Amen. Any thoughts on that? Elder Pastor? Overseer? Stevens? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you're kind of where I'm at. Um, I, and I wanted to hear other people, but I love what you just said about ending it with total deliverance and bringing the scripture out of Hebrews about how the word of God is so sharp and it divides everything. Um, when you talk about total deliverance and the rest of God, we're talking about living on a level, living in a realm with God where he is the Lord over every part of our existence. That is the rest of God on this side. And then we get the eternal rest. We, we've studied it through the years that people like Willsworth and John Lake and them, they learned how to walk in that rest of God. And that rest delivered them from their issues. Like Smith Wigglesworth had a horrible temper. But when he went into the rest of the Lord, not the eternal rest, but where Christ was formed, fully formed in him, 
Mm. He was able to conquer that area, like you said, because I don't believe that Christians today believe that there's a place that we can walk in victory in God. That doesn't mean we're above sin, but we can vi walk in a victory that we've never walked in before. That's what these pioneers that came along did, like one of our sister Bernard's favorites, um, St. Columba. He walked in that, and he walked in that so full of God that at times his body became glorified. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with Dad Seymour, Bishop Mason. These are people that did that. So God is saying, I want to do that in the whole church now. I was for those different uh, uh, eras, but now in this season, I want to glorify my entire church that I can come back for a bride that was without spot or blemish. Okay, so this is what we talk about with the rest. And I just want to emphasize one point of something that I read out of the adults, uh, the uh, the teachers, is a uh, Bible expositor and illuminator. I just want to read this segment, Elder Dancy, to take us back to something you had said. How severe breaking the Sabbath was under the law, but thank God for Jesus that he came to fulfill the law. But breaking that law um, under the uh, under the law, the, um, breaking the Sabbath, this is what it has in our expository. It says, um, it listed the things, like you said, and you read that already, the things that cause death penalty, like kidnapping, cursing parents, witchcraft, bestiality. We know all those things, okay? Uh, blasphemy, homosexuality, it was not said that, but we know that's there. Idolatry, when it speaks about any uh, um, uh, a sexual sense. But I want to just start with this one a um, couple of paragraphs. It said breaking the Sabbath was considered so serious that the death penalty could be meted out for this sin as well. How frequently capital punishment was carried out in these cases, not stated in the Bible. What well, we do know that sometimes it was, and they gave you numbers 15, 32 through 36. And it was, and it likely served as a deterrent. When you killed, and when the Lord He's the one that uh, called for uh, the capital punishment. But when they did it, it made people say second thoughts about what they would do and not do and fear God's laws and commandments. And then it goes on to say here that the fact that a person rejected God's Sabbath, remember what you just read in Hebrews, it says in, in the teacher's manual that what is the fact that a person rejected God's Sabbath commandment was a reflection of what was going on in that person's heart. God took that as a major offense. That meant that if you were to rest on that day and he provided, I hope I don't mix all this up because I, I had all this stuff I was hearing in my heart and I didn't want to cut across the lesson. I like what Ricky said. I like what Malachi said, because the thing was what they said, even about uh, a Chick-fil-A and who else was it? I don't know. But anyway, they said that, that they did it and God gave them enough revenue during the week. Think about uh, that. They didn't miss revenue or Leroy. That's who it was. That they didn't miss revenue on Sundays because the place is always packed. Why? Because they honored the Sabbath. Many, many times of what we call a Lord's Day. Because we don't, our Sabbath isn't exactly the same as theirs, so it brings us under the law. And we're not under the law, we're under grace. And that's why our day of rest is Sunday, the Lord's day that he resurrected out of the grave. Okay? But think about that, because that's something I believe with all my heart, that we as revivalists, we're going to bring that to the church again. They have lost their reverence, and they work seven days a week for money. Money, 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 or for pleasure, 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 sports, 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 a recreation, 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 and there's no day for God or our bodies. I also want to comment on that, that Jesus said what he said about the Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath, okay? And I love one of them made that point that it's for us to rest our bodies, rest, like in those days, the animals, everything. So he has a purpose why he's telling us don't go nonstop seven days a week. He wants us to take a time of reflecting on him, his goodness, family time, uh, friendship time, all of that. But think about that. And I love the way, who said that, Ella Nancy, about oh, Mary, that after God finished creating, he said, wow, I'm something. He yeah. is something. He is great. He's all of that. And he calls for us to worship what he is and what he does. 
He's a spirit, and we worship our God, our creator, in spirit and in truth. So I could almost, I, I got a little chuckle out of that, because I could just picture the Trinity after it was all done. Wow, we're something else, aren't we, Jesus? You know, I, that's me making him human now. But you know, what I'm, I want to yeah. just get that point. I love what Mary said about that, because he does. He loves his creation. When he finished with all of it, and on that seventh day, that Sabbath, he said, it is good. Hallelujah. Um, Everything he did. So that was one of the things. I'm I'm gonna I'll wrap it up, Ella Dance. But I say I'll take the rear because cool. usually you know I always mess with you usually what I do with you. But you was gone, you was this was very good, and I really enjoyed you. And you didn't short take a shortcut today. <laughs> so but let me just finish reading that part of it because this will take us right into the eight o'clock hour. But let me just just finish reading that. The fact that a person said I already read that that it says something about the heart of that person and because god knew that he said they don't honor my sabbath i know i see man i, I can separate the, the the bone from the marrow that's how much i know everything about us a lot of times we need to come before god and say lord you know us I, we can't hide anything from you you know that my thoughts cleanse me perfect yourself in me that's my prayer every day i yeah. want to be like jesus i want to please the father like jesus he lived his full life as a human totally focused on pleasing the father and he made it clear to people what the difference is with legalism and sabbath and the difference between holiness and the standard that the church world today is lost and when you tell them the standard they say it's legalism i say they're deceptive they're being deceived to live a life outside of sanctification and being separated unto god so it reads here it says being in breach uh, to the covenant relationship in Israelite was to have with the Lord was the reason that this command as a soul shall be cut off from among my people. So, and it says here, this is what it said in, the, uh, in that lesson, as with other terms, such as body, heart, and spirit, soul, does not designate a part of the human being, but rather the whole person. That's why God said, if your spirit is not right and you do not honor my holiness as my people, cut that person off from the from Israel. Cut them off from the people for a particular aspect of function. And it says, as such, it represents primary life force of the body. And then it also says, since the Sabbath was the Israelite day of worship, it can easily be confused with the Lord's day of the New Testament. Although there are similarities and a relationship between the two, they are not identical. That's very good to understand. As you talk about the black Hebrews, we also talk about a Christian movements today that believe and they still inflict some of the Sabbath traditions on us of uh, some of the sabbaths for israel only it wasn't for us and when christ resurrected he said i come not to destroy the law but i come to fulfill it so when he came of course we understand that i want to make sure every individual all the new saints that are on that they understand that and why we go to church on sunday we're not under bondage you get good christian people to come and tell you that you're supposed to have sabbath worship and all that this is not true that was the problem in jesus day god himself was there and they were trying to afflict him with their burdens and their their uh, understanding of that the other thing that i did want to say i had to comment on this um, that what Annalisa said about Pastor Brandon, and I have I have two examples of that that I really have to say about that and why God saw Brandon as He saw David, um, because another one, and I, I've always said this to him, and that's Elder Rumble. I say I don't know people. I say God put us together because I've never known anybody. He's on here. He know I've said this to him for forty years. I don't know anybody else that loves God like you do. We wouldn't be able to walk together if we didn't have the same depth of God's love. We would conflict. And I've said that to them. I've had many friends. I've dealt with many people, you know, starting from Trinity, no, really Ebenezer, all the way up to the present. But never did I know anybody that had a, a depth of love and desire to do God's will than Michael Rumble. You know, I, you know, he was just always a standout. That doesn't mean that his sister and his brother-in-law, you know, I can use them because they know I know where they are in God. So I'll use them. 
That didn't mean that they didn't love God because God is also singled out Bernadette as a Mary. But what Elder Rumble had inside of him, his love, his insatiable desire for God, God took that and he could use him to walk with the man of God as one, as a team together, okay? And it's going to get better than it's ever been, okay? Now, take it to Brandon. I've not seen that depth of God's love in these latter days and decades. I, I, that doesn't mean, again, that Myra, I can always go to them and Mary and, 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 and whoever it is, the other ones that you know that love God. But Brandon, Pastor Brandon, had something with him. Not only did I say his marriage was refreshing to me to watch them work through marriage. And as I said on Sunday, they have their arguments and stuff too. But it was like a, a refresher for me. And what God said to me, was that he was a man after my own heart, and he did liken him unto me in other room. He said the same way, because see, with other rumble, put down the 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 uh, apparatus of uh, uh, a workout. God don't want a muscular man of God. He want a spiritual man of God. So this way, the sisters won't look like they used to look when he had we were bursting out his church. But when he did that, Elder Dancy, God favored that. That's he right. smiled upon it, and. Just like that, there were certain standards that God gave me for him so that his whole focus would be on God and his word, and he outdid everybody when it came to the Bible. Brandon, I, what Annalise has told y'all is true, and that's why God chose him, because that was just one example. There were many things that he came to me, Rev, what should I do about this or that? This is what I feel. And many times if I could tell him, he already kind of had it in his heart, but he wanted to be sure he was making a smart decision. And you know what, Saints? I only had to tell him one time. You know what, with Elder Rumble, I only had to tell him one time. In those years, not knowing God was preparing him to move into leadership. So it is, once again, God repeats that. He repeats it because we can get on here and divide the Sabbath and talk about it and all the good things about it and don't do a word that it says. When it comes to you making the decisions on what you do on the Lord's day, when it comes to your children, I saw a Christian program and I'm really trying to plan something in y'all to, to, to consecrate this and get it to God. It's not, it is hard parenting today because we live in a backslidden, idolatrous church, uh, a world, a nation. So they've made everything difficult for the Christian. Now you got to make a decision with your kids and everything else when it comes to Sundays and what the blue law helped bring to us when we honored God. We, we dishonor him now. So my heart goes out to any parent from the newest little kids in our church to our teenagers trying to raise them up in the fear of God. But don't you compromise. You see what happened with Brandon. Don't call. You see what happened with me. I wasn't in holiness growing up, but I tell you what, there was a Christian standard that went on in DeWitt Stevens Sr.'s house and Eva Stevens. And it caused me to be the man of God that I am today. So with Brandon, Pastor Brandon, and the, the elevation and promotion that God gave him, that was through much commitment and self-denial. Coming through high school and his earlier years, this is how he was. And I told Brandon, I said, Brandon, I'm telling you, God told me you are a man after his own heart. Before I knew any of this, I was just more seeing a man of God. He's going to preach, then he's going to be a prophet. Then all of a sudden, next I know God said, anoint him to be the pastor. I said, oh, my goodness. Okay, Lord, I'm with you. I'm not, I've always never followed the norm of anything. You've never had me to do that. But I'm excited about it because what is this time saying? That not only am I getting ready to enter into my rest, not only is Elder Rumble getting ready to enter his rest, not only is Sister Addie and Sister Merle, as she just blew my mind on Sunday, Merle before my eyes, I couldn't believe it. I told Merle the only thing she got to do is when she get happy, bring that voice out of the stratosphere and bring it down into, you know, into our atmosphere. But I can't, there's nothing that I could say about Sister Merle. But sit back, like I said, I could sit back, not only as a proud father, but a, a, a proud cousin. And see, this girl said, what you got, I want it. And she followed me with it. And look what everybody's talking about, the way she officiated. 
And I'm so glad I just still myself and I'll do what the Lord says do in everything and put a woman up over that. And it just works so perfect. Not that anybody else couldn't have done it. I could have done the whole thing myself. But to some more, I'm trying to leave something with y'all so that we can align ourselves up with the promotion because God is getting ready to promote Angela, promote Angela. He's getting ready, oh glory to his name, to promote Celine. He's getting ready to uh, promote Sonia. He's he's getting ready, bless his name, to promote Juan. And I could go down the line and then he's getting ready to promote Millie. Let's go to some of the newer ones in this promotion. And all God says, if you see me, you can't see him with a, a, a lack of consecration. You can't see him for what God has given us, and you're here and there. And we got to learn to honor the holy day of God. Every day is holy unto the Lord. But on Sundays is our set aside, that's what we, we if I may, for, uh, uh, lack of words, say the Christian Sabbath. And we've got to learn how to keep it holy, not only with us, but with our children. Don't let the world make you like Israel was, and that everybody was bound to the figure but three teenage boys. They did not bow. What about our children? Consecrate your children as unto the Lord. And I guarantee, I promise you, that it will bring forth good fruit. And most of all, that soul that you brought into the world, they will have eternal life. I did not get on to say all this, but I make no apologies because this is it. And if we don't get this by now, we're not going to get it, and we're going to miss walking in the fullness of the almighty God. So if I hold my peace, then the blood is on my hands, and it will not be. Anybody that's got any sense of spirituality know that something is going on. I've never felt God's presence so strong in a service. And then turn around, you play it back, and you feel it again. And you play it back again, and you feel it again. I've done it maybe three times. I, laughed, I didn't do it as long, Elder Dancy. But my God, everybody is talking about the deliverance. I've had people outside of Macedonia call me and say, I've never seen or felt to that degree of consecration like that. That's because it's God's, and that's because it's Macedonia's time now to enter into the rest. But what did the lesson say? What did it say? Obedience and rest. Obedience, obedience, obedience. I want you all to get blessed. Moses was ready to let his name be blotted out the book. Make no mistake about it, Macedonia. I've labored for 44 years to see y'all get your rest, to see y'all get God's best on this side, and then you're going to have eternal life. What a blessing. What 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 a, a awesome deal. What an awesome to think about. And I want to see all of you. I didn't name everybody, but I see Alma's picture here. Alma is getting ready to get it. Shirley, you, you all know that. You know, Alma, you, somebody brought you here. They left and you stayed. You think God ain't, didn't, don't see that? I, 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 I can't help but encourage y'all. And yes, I won't stop pushing it. And if I got to get up and talk 20 minutes every Bible study, you know what I mean? I will do that. I know Pastor Brandon would not have a problem with it. You see, I know uh, uh, Elder Rumble one. I'm so glad when we get these titles right the way God wanted to be. I told y'all Sunday, I don't know what Monday's going to bring. So I got to get used to it. But the more I say it, the more I like it. One of the teachers say, can I call you Pastor B? I said, I kind of like that little ring to it, Pastor B. You know, but this is a new day. The man has ceased. I don't want to say this pastor no more. I really, in my heart, want to be your apostle, but I can't say that. And don't start calling me that until we've seen the Lord. Me, Elder Rumble, have seen the Lord. So don't get confused on it. You just got three pastors. There's some mega church. They have five pastors. So why is it so difficult? You know, so it just has to be. Pastor D and Pastor M. How about that? <laughs> you know I got to be me, Ray. And that's why I love Ray, because you know, Ray, you know you deserve this too. You deserve your double portion and open Hallelujah. door. Thank you. You, know you deserve it. And God's going to give you. He is faithful. Mighty God, glory to his name. Thank so you. each and every one of you, I speak faith tonight. Thank you, Lord. 
let's enter in to the rest of the Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight. You don't mind me, Ray. We thank you tonight for your blessing. Thank you tonight for the message, for the teaching tonight. He, he, he pricked our thoughts and about this rest as I studied it, Lord, and you began to speak to me out of it, how important everything that you have said to Macedonia, you have done it. There's nothing left. We have the church. We have all the things that you promised. There's nothing left. Glory to God. But the whirlwind and the rest of God, there's nothing else left. And even as your holiness was in this place on Sunday, you're going to fulfill what you said. We got our eyes on the prize. Help Macedonia, Lord. Help the saints of Macedonia and those like the, with the uh, proselytes. Because there's others that's on here that's picked up our consecration because they want a double portion. I'm not going to be selfish and say we're the only ones because we paid the price. God, you can do what you want because as, as Mary said, you're just God. You can do what you want. Just have your way, Lord. We don't just want to be delivered and people we know that are believers are still weak and struggling. We want all of us to receive the fullness of Christ that you can come, Lord, that nothing hinders you from coming for the bridegroom to come after a great move of God that brings the church into the fullness where without spot or blemish. That's what we want. So we say tonight, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. For whatever that means to the whole body, we know it means the world went open door for the personal promise to Macedonia. But that promise is to everyone, to us, to other saints, to our children and our children's children. So again, we say, come, Lord. Thank you for this lesson. There is a rest of God. And under the law, under the law there was the rest going into the promised land, waiting for the Messiah. You've come. So now that rest in the new covenant is that Christ be fully formed in every believer, every boy, girl, every believer. We thank you, we praise you, and we say, come, Lord. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready, mighty God. Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to see your face and to get the orders for the next chapter, this new chapter. Hallelujah. This new chapter as we've already taken territory in the promised land. I'm ready. We give you praise. We give you glory. Keep the people ready. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless.